In the same way that we wrote a function for operating on an array, we can write a function for operating on the elements of a list. In order to do this, we kind of need to understand a few more methods that we can call on the list. So if we bring up the REPL and we go through it, as was mentioned previously, indexing into the array, so calling, for example, LST sub 3, is very inefficient. And so that's not something that we want to do very often. Instead, with the list, it's much better to look at the first element and then recursively consider the rest of the list. And these can be done using the methods head and tail. So head returns the first element in a list, and tail gives you back a list that is everything after the first element. And of course, if you call tail on the last element, you'll get back nil. So using this information, we can write our method operate on list. We're going to pass in the list, which will be a list of ints here. We don't need to pass in an index like we did with the array. We're going to pass in our operation. And in this case, it can be advantageous to actually pass in a base value. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And the function that we're operating on is something that takes an int and an int and returns an int. And this whole thing is going to give us back an int. So how does this function work? Well, the idea is that we're going to keep calling tail each time to make a shorter and shorter list and we're done when we run out of elements. Okay, so how do we express that here? Well, we can say if LST equals equals nil, then we have an empty list and we want to give back our base value. Else, we are going to operate with F on the head of the list and the recursive call with the tail of the list. So each time that we call this, we are using a slightly shorter list than what we had before. So if we start off with a list that has five elements in it, the next call is going to cut off the first element, which we're going to use here, but then we only have four left. And on the next recursive call, we'll go down to three, two, one. And when we get to no elements left, we'll take this case, and we'll use our base value. We can demonstrate this working. Operate on list LST. If I'm going to do addition, I can use a base value of zero and say we're going to add things up. And we can come over and run that code, we have a syntax error. Error. Parentheses expected but a curly brace found and that is because I left off a parentheses right there. Scala is very picky about those things. So for my five values I'm going to enter one, two, three, four, five. It printed out the list. I didn't put the operate inside of a print line so it went and did a calculation, didn't tell us anything about it. We'll try that again. One, two, three, four, five. And sure enough, we get a nice little sum of 15. Now it turns out that in the case of lists, while we can call head and tail, you can also pull apart a list using pattern matching. And so I want to write another version of this that's going to use pattern matching. So we learned about the match statement and for this version I will go ahead no we'll, we'll leave it as is. Uh, I was thinking of taking out the base value but but it works just as well here. 
I want to match on the list. And of course, one case is we don't have anything. So that would be case nil. And then we just give back the base value. Now here's where the pattern matching gets interesting. Our other case, we need a head value and a tail value. And we can express that using the pattern something cons something. And I picked the, the variable names h and t to represent the head and the tail of our list. And then what we want to give back is kind of what we had before. We want to call f on that head value as well as operate on list of the tail value, our base, and the function. So it turns out a lot of times when you're writing functions to work with lists, lists are naturally recursive. And while you can use head and tail to kind of go through the recursion, it's actually kind of far more natural to consider using the match and using patterns in here. Uh, the patterns kind of give you a way to pull things apart that's a bit more concise uh, and can you know, definitely once you're used to it, it's, it's a nice pattern that can be easier for people to read.